Aye, aye, Shepherd's Pie. Greetings from the Philippines. I'm in Dumaguete. Just a regular day in one of my regular haunts. And I'm about to have a chat with a regular guy. But he's not a regular guy, is he? He's the one and only regular guy. It's Scotty Boy. And he's on my channel. Can you Adam and Eve it? So here we go. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Well, Scott. Thanks for sitting down, mate. I really appreciate this. It's um, it's an honour. I've been uh, admiring you from afar for all these years, and uh, now you're on my channel. What can I say? Other than we're very grateful. So tell me, Scott, where did it all start? Where are you from, mate? Well, it's uh, you know, it starts in Vancouver. Okay, look, uh, I was born to not like Vancouver. I loved, I, since I was a kid, I loved the warm weather. Okay. So my dream when I was a kid was to move to Arizona or California, the, you know, Southern part of the United States. And I thought, you know, this, this Southern border of Canada is stopping me from actually living my life where I want to go. If I was just born across the border, if I was American, I could actually be free to travel wherever I want in, in the, in the States. Right. And I would head right down there near Mexico because I've always loved the warm weather. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm from a cold rainy kind of place. And so, uh, in my head is warm weather, okay? So then I grow up and uh, reality sets in and I'm like, you know, dude, look, uh, I'm not going to have like a great education where, you know, companies from America are going to be calling me. This, this is not going to happen. So I kind of resigned myself to uh, living my life there in Canada. You know, reality sets in. But then, you know, here I am, 19. I'm on the chat rooms. i um, looking for girls. Like, you know, I kind of want to get laid. I'm a teenager, right? And so... I meet a Filipina. I meet a Filipina and uh, the goal is accomplished. And um, I didn't realize there's more to this goal. She is going to open my eyes up to a brand new world. Now, I, now I'm not going to find Philippines on a map at this time, right? I mean, I've known Philippines people, but I've, it's never crossed my mind. Like, where is the Philippines? Just he's Filipino. You know, that, that's how I know Filipino. And so uh, she brings me down to her home because she was coming down anyway to visit her parents. Okay. So she says, do you want to go? So we hop on a plane and we go. And the first trip was for a month and <clears throat> changed my life. Okay. Changed my, it kind of screwed up my life. Cause now I'm like, I, I'm thinking like, if, if I didn't go to the Philippines, maybe I'm like thinking, okay, how can I make my life at home? I'm going to go to school, get an education, be a stockbroker, be an electrician, be whatever I'm going to be. But now I'm like, get me the hell out of here, you know? So now I'm on, I'm on this newly uh, formed internet trying to figure out what kind of jobs are overseas. And so I put up my resume and then somebody from uh, Korea called me. So that changed my life, brought me to 20 years in Korea. And I mean, if it was someone from Brazil who contacted me to work there, I would have probably would have gone to Brazil for 20 years. So what were you doing in, in Korea? That was teaching, was it? No, it was just all, yeah, it was all teaching. It was 100% teaching and it just went from one job to another. And the job was okay. You know, job was a job. You know, you got your responsibilities. You got to do it. Is it fun? Yeah, it's got its fun points. It's got a headache points, but it's a job. But what I really loved, the number one thing, the reason I stayed for so long teaching is because I loved that at the end of a one-year contract i could take as much time off as i want okay right and then whenever i was done my little travel adventure there i could just come right back to korea get another job sign a one-year contract right work hard for that year although it's not really working hard but when the year is done new adventure you know and so at first you know early 2000s i was always coming to the philippines but then there was this 10-year stretch where I got hooked on Pattaya, Thailand. Okay. Oh, okay. Pattaya, yeah, just Pattaya and Bangkok. And I went to other parts. I went to Chiang Mai, right? I went hiking. But then, you know, when it was done, I just got the first train back to uh, Pattaya. I went, I went down to Phuket and it was like a three day trip. But after two days, I'm like, screw it. I'm going back to Pattaya, right? So I what, learned. What, what did you like about Pattaya? Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, beautiful beaches, um, the bars. And uh, some stuff that, you know, um, yeah, the, the beaches <laughs> and the bars. That's about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but that was a 10-year obsession. And it was a co-worker who introduced me to Pattaya because I'd never heard of this place before. And, I, you know, he says, y y you go there, there's all these, uh, you know, uh, nice things there. And so I thought, oh, cool. You know, here I am. You know, I, 
I never got this 18-year-old uh, brain to develop, right? So here I am. Okay. Oh, wow. I get so excited. I hope it's I, you know. So, you know, I'm, well, how old was I when I went over there? I don't know. 20s, 25 maybe. So I'm uh, there in Pattaya. And so this obsession from age maybe 25 to 35 of Pattaya happens, okay? And every time I get a chance, it's just Pattaya, 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 right? And what happened was over this 10 year period, my love for Pattaya went down. But it wasn't me, it wasn't my emotions that made it go down. It was really, I mean, it, when I first went there, it was a good time and the girls were beautiful. But then over the 10 year period, okay, it was these, uh, so much, so many more tourists came in and it would, the, the dynamics sort of changed over the 10 years and the girls who were beautiful, it seems like, you know, they aged 10 years and no new, you know, supply came in. And so uh, I just kind of got sick of it. And then I started coming back to the Philippines. And when I came back to the Philippines, what I realized is, damn, I love it more now than I did before. So my love for the Philippines over this time grew. My love for the for Thailand diminished. Um, there are some still some good things I love about Thailand. But um, like if you're in Pattaya and you're in Angeles City, right? And I know some people are going to, oh, this guy's a dog. You know, he's an Angeles kind of guy. Okay. We're, we're all different. Okay. I'm an Angeles <laughs> guy. You're not. Who's ever watching? Okay. And so um, like the. The, the worst bar in Pattaya is better than the best bar in, in Angeles City. I, you've never been to Angeles City, but it's, it's the Pattaya of the Philippines, okay? But it's kind of uh, not really the same, right? But I mean, yeah, there's some good things about Thailand, and you can't go wrong with Thailand. I, I know, I've known two guys, personally, okay, who were in Thailand, like during, for example, during the pandemic, they couldn't get to, to the Philippines, so they're in Thailand, and then when the Philippines opened up, these two guys, okay, they don't know each other, but they came to the to the Philippines because it was open now, okay? Man, they didn't last two months right back to Thailand, right? right? So, I mean, some people, they're just like, you got to look in your heart, right? Some people are Thailand people. Some people are Philippines people. You can't really explain, you know, why you are the way you are, but just, you know, me, I happen to be a Philippines person, but I know full well, if I went to Thailand, I'd be happy there. But it's just in my heart, it's, it's full of uh, the Philippines. You know, that's, that's why I stay here. That's why I'm getting a, a, a scooter. That's why I have no intention to leave. My full focus is, you know, I'm going to get married, going to have a, you know, live off the grid here. Everything is in the Philippines for me. But if I ever did get kicked out for whatever reason, we don't know, uh, my backup would be Cambodia because my top priority when I'm going to live somewhere is the visa. Yeah. Right? And so you need a visa. That's like, Thailand has a pretty... Uh, well, uh, I won't comment because I don't know, but I know you can stay like two months and people say you can extend, right, for another month. Yeah, but I don't want to do this. You know, I just want to have a one-year visa like you do here, right? You just, how old are you? 45. Yeah, when you get to 50, Thailand is very easy, but you've got to get the 50 mark because then you can get a uh, one-year retirement visa. And then how much is it expensive to get that? No, no, it's very cheap. It's, okay. uh, it's about 2,000 baht. It's just, it's just the financial requirements you need to make. You need to have, it used to be the equivalent of uh, 16,000 pounds in, no, 18,000 pounds in a bank account. You can't touch it for the first six months and you can touch it. When you renew, it's got to be there again. Oh. Or you've got to have a pension of 1,600 pounds a month. I might do the conversions. Trouble with Cambodia now, it's very hard with visas. Once you get to 55, you can get a retirement visa um, and you only need $800 a month for that. But up until 55 now, Cambodia has got incredibly hard over the last few years. As, as I, sorry, as I know in Cambodia, as I, as I know, as I've heard, I'll, I'll rephrase that, is in Cambodia, it's, uh, you're at the airport or the port of entry, and they ask you how long you're going to stay. And if you say one year, it's, for example, 300 bucks, you just no, pay the Those days have gone. They were the old business visas. Yep. They went about three, four years ago. Oh, okay. um, Now you go there, you've got to go in for a month, you can extend it. They will give you six months visa to find a job, but you've got to find a job or start a business in that time. Yeah. Um, the thing I don't know about Cambodia is if you're in Thailand now, you've got lots of dodgy visa agents, so you can always find a way around it. I'm not so sure about Cambodia. I've looked on the forums. There must be some. 
So it might be possible, but to do it strictly by the book, it's a hell of a lot harder than it used to be. I've heard about these uh, Thai fixers. They can hook you up with the visa. And I know some people like they're by the book kind of people. Fixers yeah. are not for everyone, but I'm just saying they're available. And the uh, guy I know in, uh, two guys I know there in Thailand who came here and went back. One is by the books kind of guy. He went, he went the full meal deal way. And the other guy's the fixer kind of guy, right? And he said, easy as pie, you know, like just, just let him know. He'll, he'll connect me with this fixer. Well, just one disclaimer, just in case we're giving people advice on things. This fixer business was a huge thing. Now, I've not been back to Thailand for a while, but I have heard through the grapevine, and I've seen a few people, a guy, Steve Ross, he's got a channel. Apparently, since all the Russians and the Ukrainians went over there, they all arrived with bags of money, these visa agencies all had like, you know, 500 dodgy visas they could do a year and they've gone. And the price has gone from like, it used to be like 500 to fix it. Now you're looking like 5,000. It might level itself out, but a lot of people have complained that, uh, you know, they came in these Russians with their things, they bought apartments, they bought all the dodgy visas up. So it's not, so I've heard, as easy as it was, but fingers man, crossed it will change. Just stick to the Philippines, man. I mean, it's so easy here. You know, like uh, two days ago, I was online at immigration.gov or whatever it is here. And, you know, it took five minutes, uh, six months, yeah. six months, renewed for six months. <laughs> easy as pie. I mean, it's so easy here. So you pay for it. But I mean, uh, you know, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. Um, but the, the other uh, backup, since you just ruined my Cambodia backup, <laughs> is that the other backup that I already had as a plan was um, to go Malaysia. Like, if you look at the map, you got Malaysia, and then above it, you got Thailand, yeah. then Cambodia, Vietnam, yeah. and then you got Laos, Laos yeah. and Burma. You could just go like a circle, you know, book yeah. one month in each place or two months, however long the visa is. I think in, in uh, Thailand, you get two months, let's say one month in Cambo, Cambodia, and then three months in Vietnam. Right. And then how long can you stay in Laos and Burma? Do you know? Well, Burma is a war one. I don't think you're going to, I don't think you're going to want to cross the border in the Myanmar. Gotcha. So um, uh, Laos, I think it's um, one thing you can do. If you want to stay longer in Thailand, you can get a tourist visa before you go from any embassy. That will be valid for two months. Go. Then you can extend that for a month. So that gets you three months. Um, you can probably do a border crossing and then come back. But the border crossings are a lot tighter now. But you, 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 know, but you can also do like an education visa. For yeah, one year, you can do that. Yeah, you can, well, you can do that for several years. Oh, you can do it several. Yeah, I heard yeah. it was only one, and then they won't renew it. No, well, I mean, the advice I'm giving is based on past experience. Sure. But it depends on the length of the courses, and I think oh. I think a lot of people are, but you're supposed to attend all the lessons and things. But why not? Why not learn Thai? Why not do it? But there used to be, and there probably still are some schools who will say you've attended and that. I mean, you'd have yeah. to try it yourself. But yeah, the e visa, the ed visa, that was a thing. And you used to be able to, as long as you kept on rolling on courses, do that for three years, you know. There will, there will be something, mate. If you want to do it, there will always be something. There will always be someone that will help you. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next topic. Yeah. Right, back to you, mate. Your life story. <laughs> okay. Well, wh where did I end up? You had decided that the Philippines was for you, that you, you fell out of love with uh, Thailand. So right. the Philippines was the... Uh, oh, right. And then, so, yeah, I'm... Uh, got this thing on my mind, you know. I got to live in Philippines. I mean... It's a dream, right? And then, you know, the thing is, uh, I'm useless at everything, right? So I'm thinking, well, what the hell am I going to do? What, what can I do to live in the Philippines? Okay. So then this new industry came up teaching English in uh, online through Chinese kids or whatever, right? And so, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Do I want to do it? No. Do I want to do it? No. Every molecule in my body is saying, I don't want to teach English online when I get to the Philippines, you know. Whenever I get to the Philippines, I just feel like enjoying, right? And so I was going to do that, but I was still working in Korea, right? I was in my comfort zone there. I'm not happy, but not unhappy, right? Anyway, in my comfort zone there, my daily, got my daily routine. And then one day, uh, I get this new job, okay? It's a two-year contract, more pay, right? But I'm more of a pain in the butt, too. And so uh, I don't like it there, right? I don't like my coworkers. I don't like my boss. I don't like everything about it. Right? I don't like the city I'm in. And I thought, okay, screw this, man. I, 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 you know, I mean, don't you want to be happy? I mean, just, I just want to be happy. That, you know, why is it so difficult there in life? There's nothing wrong with that. Right. It's, it's, anyway, I just, uh, you know, I just want to be happy. So I'm one year into this contract and I'm thinking, oh, geez, you know, I got one year left and, I, you know, I really don't want to do this teaching thing anymore. Right. And so somehow 
sorry, somehow it got in my head to start a YouTube channel, right? Okay. So I went up to the local coffee shop and I thought, okay, what topic can I do? You know what? The, oh, and the reason, uh, I'll go back a bit. The reason it got into my head about starting a YouTube channel is because there was some guy being interviewed. He was a YouTuber. He was being interviewed on another YouTube channel, and I'm watching this channel. He said he makes $17,000 a month Jesus. on YouTube, and, uh, you know, he's big time, right? Yeah. And I thought, damn, and that was the spark that right. made me realize, because I knew guys were making, but nobody really talked about how much money they were making online. It was, I don't know, I don't know, big 20 bucks, 100 bucks, I don't know. And when that guy said that, okay, that opened my mind. So... I went up to the coffee shop and I made a list about like, I was making this, like, what could I vlog about, right? That's why I had two ideas. One was about the Philippines, because that's all I know. My mind is consumed with the Philippines. And the other one was um, health. I went through this time temporarily where I was really into Dr. Berg and alternative health and whatnot. I was going to do like that kind of show, right? And it turns out I started two YouTube channels, okay? The health channel the uh, Philippines channel. But what happened was I found myself consumed with this Philippines channel. I mean, when I'm, you know, walking to the store, like all I'm thinking about is the Philippines channel. I'm not, I'm not even thinking about the health channel anymore. So it, it, it just came out, all these, all these stories came out from my past, right? And so I thought, okay, so for 11 months, all I'm going to do is tell stories. And what surprised me was that I had enough stories to last 11 months. How is this possible, right? Okay. Well, it's possible because I spent my whole life in the Philippines and Thailand and things happened, you know? And so I was typing out sort of, uh, I was trying to get ideas for, you know, brainstorming these. And what I realized is, ah, I can tell that idea. These things, I didn't even think about these uh, ideas, like these stories I had, these things I experienced until I started writing them out and brainstorming. And then I Realize, oh, that's a story. Oh, that's a story, right? And then you, I'd have stories like of uh, ex-girlfriends and whatnot. And like the one boho girl, what I realized is, damn, not only is this a story, it's like a huge story. It's like, it's like one hour, you know? So I broke it up into different uh, bits, but I had all these stories. And so like, you know, there's in life, it's all about timing. And you realize in hindsight why things happened the way they did, right? Even if it was a pain in the butt, you realize that happened for a reason. Like, like my last job being a pain in the butt. If I liked my last job there, maybe I never came to the Philippines. Maybe I never started a YouTube channel. But it was this pain of having to go to work and pain of having to wake up in the morning and go to this job that I hated. That's what made my brain like get over this hump because it's not easy starting a YouTube channel. That means you have zero subscribers, zero people watching, you're spilling your guts out. It's not easy. But it was the pain of that job that made me get over that hump. I, I, I got a new computer. I, I got a, you know, it, it's, it's like, it's like when I started the YouTube channel, it was like I was procrastinating because I didn't want to upload my first video. I got, oh, I need to buy this first. I need to buy that first. And so it happened. And then honestly, timing in life and hindsight, you realize why everything happened. Best thing I ever did. Why is it the best thing? Because now, right now, I'm living the fantasy that I've always thought about living in my mind. It's now a reality. That's and so, idea. yeah, and the thing is, this, this fantasy keeps getting better and better. Because, like, now I'm getting a scooter, and I'm going to do, like, something beyond my wildest dreams. I'm going to go to all these small little towns throughout the Philippines, meet the people, vlog, you know, get a camera, walk around, whether the people speak English or not in these small little towns. Because, like, when I was in a bus going from city to city, I'd be on the highway, and this is just an example, a real-life example. I'd come to, the bus would pass by this town on the side of the highway that looked like 70 people live there, okay? Anyway, it's a small town. They have their life there on the side of the highway. You got the men, you got the women, you got these, you know, hot girls and, you know, uh, I don't even see a school there. I don't know how these kids are going to school, but I mean, look, I want to stop there and freaking talk to them, learn about the life that's in this town. And so when I have a scooter, you know, God forbid, you know, God forbid I'm safe on the scooter. You know, I'm not a scooter kind of guy, but I'm going to stop there, talk to them, vlog in this uh, small little uh, highway side town and find out what life is like there. And that's what I want to do 
uh, as, as far as like three years down, because my visa is for three years, right? Three years, and then we'll see what happens at the end of three years. But I just want to travel the Philippines and meet as many people, learn as much about the Philippines as possible. And like my buddy um, told me, there's this town in Luzon. Okay, he was in this town. And in this town, off the top of my head, I forgot the name of this town, but I, I'm going to be going there. It's already bookmarked on, but there's this culture in this small town, okay? And this culture is girls wear crop tops. <laughs> and, and it's like with, with cleavage, you know, not the, you know, any Christians out there, I don't mean to offend you, but I mean, that's the culture in this town. All the girls have the same style. And I'm thinking, damn, you know, like all these things that I don't know. And the thing is, I'm going to learn a thousand other like, hidden gems around yeah, yeah, the Philippines yeah. as I go around. But hopefully, hopefully it clicks. And, you know, I make money with YouTube and I c it can uh, pay for my travels around the Philippines. And then, you know, hopefully in my dream of all the discovering all these undiscovered gems is going to, because look, Dumaguete is a hidden gem. And it was Rike that opened up Dumaguete to the world. But why doesn't people go up to Northern Luzon, L Northern Island of Luzon or some small town in uh, Mindanao that's better than D Dumaguete, right? Because no one's opened it up yet. Yeah. And so people first need to be opened up to the idea, and then they need to learn more about it. And then, you know, time is going to rectify if it's really the place to be. And that's what happened to Dumaguete. But why is Dumaguete getting more and more crowded with more and more foreigners? Because there's not other options. That's why. Yeah. But yeah. So you're a fan of Dumaguete, are you? You know, the thing is, whenever I'm in Dumaguete, I feel at home. And the reason is, like, you'll get guys, vloggers saying, like, I didn't come to the Philippines. I didn't come halfway around the world to hang out with other foreigners, right? But then you'll see, all their friends are foreigners, right? I mean, look, you just can't get it out of you. Look, it's no different than a Filipino going to my hometown in Vancouver. I wanted to make friends with Filipinos. But isn't that understandable? Yeah. Right? It's the same thing. So when I come here, I want to make friends with other foreigners because just we have something in common. And, um, you, yeah, make friends with Filipinos. But they, I find there's a, often a rift. Like, there's something with, um, like, for example, you're going to talk about the stock market. with Like, they don't know because it's in New York. You know, they just don't do that stuff. Um, I don't know, hockey. You know, like, I need another Canadian to talk about hockey with. So, you know, you, anyway, the beauty, the beauty of Dumaguete is that there's a lot of foreigners here, right? And it's Dumaguete, Angeles, okay? And... Um, the Cebu, like the Ayala Mall area, they're really foreigner friendly. But what you'll find is they are, they are uh, friendly. Like, like the, the foreigners are friendly. Like they want to, they want to stop. They want to go to a coffee shop and talk with other foreigners because there's not a lot to do. You know, when you when you don't have a job to go to, there's all the go to a coffee shop, meet another foreigner. I was in a coffee shop when I met you. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was walking by and I yeah. saw you through the window. Yeah. Beauty of Dumaguete, you yeah. know. And so that's the thing. And so I'm going to go to Ziggy Horn next. And my buddy here uh, is going to give me some tips. So we're already learning about Ziggy Horn before I go there. But I'm going to go to Ziggy Horn, get a scooter, check out Ziggy Horn. I was not going to go there before because I'm just, you know, by myself. And I, I imagine Ziggy Horn being the you know, romantic place like Baraka. You know, you want to go there, but you want to go with a girl. Walk along the beach. But I'm going to go there as a single guy, just check it out. He said there's a lot of uh, bars there, right? San Juan, yeah. It's in San Juan. So I'm going to go to San Juan, check out San Juan, vlog about San Juan, see if I can meet some people there in San Juan, and just get a feel for San Juan. And for all I know, you know, life is full of surprises. I'm going to, I'm going to spend the next 80 years of my life in San Juan. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it's possible. Anyway. You know, it's interesting about Dumaguete because um, it just seems a Marmite place. A lot of the younger vloggers, they just slag it off to high heaven. But a lot of the older vloggers are here think it's paradise. So that's why I ask, because it's, it's... Whenever I've done videos on Dumaguete, they're controversial. <laughs> it, it, it's just that place. Well, the, the thing is, um, why is it that people come here to Dumaguete and they don't really travel around, they just stick here? It's because it's nice here, you know? Like, it's comfortable. Like, I feel comfortable whenever I come to Dumaguete, right? I don't really have a desire to go. I'm very comfortable here. I got my daily routine. There's good food around. I mean, there's this beautiful uh, Henry's, what is this, a coffee shop? It's huge, yeah. right? It's beautiful, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so coffee shops, restaurants, foreigners, you got the boardwalk there. You got gyms there if you're into health. 
bars. I mean, it's it's a good place to be. It's a good place to be here. No, what I always say, people, if, they, if you find a place you like, power to you. You know, I mean, everyone's different. Everyone wants different things. If you found a couple of places, then, uh, you know, yeah, great. The you only problem it. with Dumaguete is that you get too comfortable here. You really do. You get like, why am I, uh, why am I here? Because I've been here before. I'm comfortable here. I know. I was in Cebu before and I can't stand the gridlock there, the, the traffic there. I just, whenever I'm in Cebu, I just want to get the hell out of Cebu, right? When I come to Dumaguete, it's wide open. There's, you know, it's, I just feel like free when I come here. I like it. And um, it's so comfortable that you really, a lot of guys that come here, they don't have a desire to go travel around because they just yeah. get so comfortable here. In, uh, and it's the same with Ayala area of Cebu. It's the same with Angeles. You'll find that most of the guys there, I'd say um, 19 of 20 guys there, they just live there, you know? And when they vacation, they just go to Angeles because they're Angeles guys, you know? And there's, you know, you got to look in yourself. Are you an Angeles, a Dumaguete, a Cebu kind of guy? I know guys that they're happy there in Cebu. They come here, they visit Dumaguete, and then they go back. They're just Cebu kind of people, right? And uh, yeah. What can I, I think say? for me personally, the trouble with Dumaguete was when I got here from Thailand, there's no wow factor here. Oh. So when you first get here, you think, what have you got yourself in for? But as I've gone on my months on, months off, there's a lot more to the place. So I, I know where you're coming from. I agree with you now. But a few months ago, I'd have thought, what the hell is he talking about? But no, you're right. It, it, the more you go, the more you know, the more you feel comfortable, and the more you feel at home. You got a point. Because uh, the very first time I came here before the pandemic, it was, uh, I booked a month at an Airbnb. And this month at the Airbnb, I would say if I was staying at a hotel, I probably would have been here two days and moved on. But it was because I stayed a month at an Airbnb, I already prepaid. I stayed here and I built up this daily routine and I comfortable. And what I did, I extended another month. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think there are many people in the Philippines, including Filipinos, who would have traveled as much as you because you've been... I mean, I know there's 7,000 islands plus, so there's be a lot of places you haven't been to, yep. but it would be silly to have you on the channel and not ask you a few questions just to help the viewers and to help me as well. So I'd like to give you a couple of scenarios here. Okay. I am 65 year old guy. I'm quite set in the ways. I'm not a party animal. And I've decided to come to the Philippines, potentially to find a partner and to settle down but I'm not looking for the wildlife. Where would you recommend I uh, start off? Where would I go first? Where would be the place for me, do you think? Well, I mean, uh, look. I mean, look. This guy, this guy, this 65-year-old guy, he, he's probably, his, his top priority is to meet friends whether he's a social guy or not, you know, you, you, you can go to a, a coffee shop by yourself, but you don't mind sitting across from someone else, having a life story, making a new connection. And then once you got a new connection, it leads to another, and then you got things to do, right? And so the, the, the good thing about Dumaguete for that guy is that he can make a life here, you know? He's not just going to be solitary living somewhere, right? Like if he's in Manila, it's hard to meet friends there, right? So that's the beauty of Dumaguete. Now, the beauty of... Um, Ayala, the Ayala area of Cebu is that it's kind of the same thing. Like I've been here and I've been there. Okay. And I've been to, uh, uh, Angeles when it comes to the foreigner heavy people, but it's so easy to make friends. You're sitting at a coffee shop by yourself. Someone sits down next to you, you stack up a conversation. Okay. Friend next day, you're at a different coffee shop by yourself. There's another foreigner there, you know, and you know, one of you, he, you or he says, uh, Hey, where are you from? Stuff like that. New friends, you know, and whether it's the kind of friend who, you know, uh, you get to his Facebook messenger or his kind of friend who you see him again and you say, hey, Joe, how's it going? Right. Uh, but the thing is, the more people, you know, the more where you are, feels at home. And so for that 65 year old guy, he's probably his ambition since he's not a nightlife kind of guy. It's just he wants a comfortable place to live. And it's not really going to feel comfortable if you don't know other people. Right. And so, yeah. I mean, it would be, for that guy, it would be Dumaguete, right? Dumaguete. And Dumaguete is more than Dumaguete. You got, you got different areas of Dumaguete that are kind of like Dumaguete, right, nearby. And uh, it would be the Ayala area. And when I say Ayala area, there's a mall called Ayala Mall. And there's a whole bunch of condos around Ayala Mall. And that's what I call the Ayala area. Okay. Yeah. Right, that's interesting. So we've got Negros Oriental, 
and we've got uh, Aloha outside Cebu. Right, I am a 25-year-old guy, no interest in uh, finding a permanent match. I just want to go out, I want to get drunk, I want to meet as many women as possible. I want to live, yeah, I, I, I want to enjoy life for a couple of years. Where, where would I go? That guy, I mean, look, when it comes to places that I've been personally that I can see, I mean, that guy is full on an Angelus guy, okay? Now, the first thing I would say to that guy, the first thing I would say to him is, look, you don't want to be in Angeles, you want to be in Pattaya, Thailand, okay? But since you're already here in the Philippines, okay, Angeles is the way to go. But I mean, the good thing about Angeles is just for that guy, that horny, the 20, 25-year-old, and hey, I was there, you know, I was that horny 25-year-old. I'm not that guy anymore. But for that guy, I mean, look, look, when it comes to Angeles, it's just like, I don't know what I can see, the S word, okay, in the sack is in, just in the air there in Angeles. It's just like, even if the girl's not that kind of girl, it's just in the air, and it's just like you grow up in this environment, you know, and it, that, that's, a, that's the best way to explain Angeles. It's just an S kind of city, okay? And so for that guy, the 25-year-old, yeah, I would say park your butt there in Angeles, get a beer, see the scenery, see the nightlife, and hey, you know, like, a, like, like I said before for the 65-year-old, you meet friends, and the friends are going to tell you where the best bars are, where the best girls are, and eventually... Life there in Angeles for that 25-year-old is going to get more and more comfortable. Interesting. Right, and this is the last one then. No age on this one. I'm a guy. I might be a couple. What I'm looking for is I want to live off the grid. I want to live like a Filipino, not particularly interested in having anything to do with expats. I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, lead a natural, simple life away from the hustle and the bustle of the sea. Off the grid. Yeah, yeah. That's good, because that's what I want. Now, the thing when, when it comes to off the grid is that you want to get a, a cool environment. So you want to be up in the mountains, right? So there are uh, three kind of areas for this guy. And it's one is, uh, one is the in Mindanao called Malai Balai. Okay, Malai Balai is a mountainous area. It's very cool. You need a blanket at nighttime. Okay, it's pretty cool there. And then... Uh, you got Tagaytay there. You got Tagaytay is in uh, nearby Manila. That's the beauty of Tagaytay. It's in the mountains, but the beauty of Tagaytay is um, it's, it's nearby Manila. So it's, you got the convenience of Manila, maybe a one hour bus ride into Manila. Plus you got the province there. Okay. Um, you're in the countryside. Now the other one is Baguio. Now what people don't realize about Baguio is that you got Baguio City, which is busy, and people said, oh, I don't want to live in Baguio, it's too busy. What people don't realize is that, draw an hour radius around Baguio, okay? You got a huge area, okay? Up, up you know, there's, there's up the Sagata, and the, there's other little areas, so you don't have to be in Baguio. But people might use Baguio as a landmark, because it's well known. Now, if I said you want to live in Sagata, you'd say, where's Sagata? You'd say, oh, it's near Baguio, it just falls back to Baguio. But I mean, you got Baguio, it's, a, it's the mountain, but there's this whole radius around Baguio that is also the mountain. It's also cool. You could live off the grid there. And the beauty of off the grid there is that, number one, it's cheap, okay? You got the cheapest electricity in the mountainous areas because nobody uses aircon. Number two, you don't need an aircon, okay? And number three, it's cool. You wake up in the morning, you might want to wear a sweater, you know, have your cup of coffee. You're not sweating, you know? And... Um, it's easy to live off the grid there because like aircon takes up the most electricity, but if you're going to have a, like a solar panel on your top of your roof, it might not be enough to power an aircon. It's enough to power your fridge and the fan and everything else, right? But the most underutilized tool in the Philippines is an overhead ceiling fan like we got here, right? And um, if you're in your house, you got an overhead ceiling fan, just keep that on all day, man. You're up in the mountains. You're going to be cool. You're going to be cool up there. So when it comes, like, I know a guy living about an hour away from uh, Baguio, and he spends 350 bucks American a month, okay? Wow. Yeah, because he's, it's, well, it's, he's, number one, he's in the province, right? He's, he, I think he spends 70 bucks a month for rent. Right. And then, you know, they go to the market, they get their big sack of rice, they get their vegetables, you know, like, like you can get a bag of vegetables in the Philippines for like 10 or 20 pesos, okay? That right? That's all, yeah, if you go to the market. If you go to the restaurant, you're going to pay, you know, 300 pesos, something like that. And then, um, yeah, so he doesn't, I mean, he gets around on a mountain bike, right? 
he says the best things in life are free. He, he hikes, he runs, he does his exercises, you know, and he joins the gym. Gym is what, uh, 700 pesos a month he pays. And so life is good there and it's cheap and it's off the grid. And so, yeah, I mean, the, for that guy, I would recommend him out in this area. Right. Well, there you go. I can't think of another scenario and I don't want to take up too much more of your time. So um, there you go, fellas. You've heard it from the regular guy. You know, um, I give a bit of advice on my channel about things, but I don't really know what I'm talking about. But this guy does. So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, great interview, Scott. You're an interesting bloke. Love the channel. I say I'll put a link and everything down in there, but everyone knows who you are, so I'm not going to really pull over. But, uh, yeah, thanks, mate. Really appreciate that. It's been a, been a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, man. Well, you know what to do, folks. If you enjoyed the video, I don't know why you wouldn't have done. Smash the like button. If you subscribe, you make an old man very happy. And if you don't do either, well, never mind. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe, be lucky.